and set up. Sorry, just making sure I don't cross around my mouth or anything. Uh, all right, how's everybody doing today? Let's get uh, the chat in here. Um, I just need a couple of seconds here for the live stream to begin, and then we'll be good to go. All right, we got Filthy Will here. We got King Gamer. Welcome. I believe you are newish. Okay, it looks like we're good. <laughs> all right, it looks like we're all good to go. All right. How's everybody doing today? We got uh, Adria back again. Glad to have you back with us. Not red, of course, unfortunately. Um, I'm thinking about maybe getting rid of those lights. I don't know. I, I like them and I don't. Um, I don't know. I need to think about it. Anyway, Laredo is back once again. Um, fellow students in Harmony and Melody all the way from Johannesburg. The city of gold, South Africa. Well, send me some gold, please. That would be nice. All right, guys, we're going to get started here. Um, let me get the Facebook stream started, and then I'll just get on with it. So just give, it'll be less than a minute. Feel free to say hello in the chat, um, in the um, messages. What are they called? Comments, <laughs> if you want. Hello from Sweden, from Christine. Hello, Christine. Okay. And of course, I don't know if I said hello to Jeremy, but we got pretty much a good a good collection of people here today. Okay, here we go. Hello students, your piano teacher Tim back here once again today. Welcome to our classroom piano lessons on the web. If you are a new student and you're watching on Facebook, please like our page. Um, and then if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed. You have all notifications turned on because a new lessons coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a beat. Okay, today we're talking about meeting and um, basically making and meeting your goals learning piano. So we're gonna get right onto it. Let me get my notes out here um, really quick, just to make sure I cover everything today, but they are out already. Here they are. Okay. All right, hello to everybody who has just joined us. All right. Setting goals is super important when learning how to play piano, but not just piano, pretty much anything you can do in life. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to set goals, well, the importance of goals, and then I'm gonna talk about how to set those goals and meet and exceed those goals so that you can get the maximum level of achievement learning piano. All right, your piano teacher, Tim, here. Let's get right on to it. I think I'm gonna do another intro. I didn't like that one, so I'm gonna redo this one. Setting goals is super important when learning how to play piano, but not just playing piano, pretty much anything you can do in life. Well, today I'm going to explain the importance of setting goals as well as how to set goals and how to meet and exceed those goals so that you can be really successful, not just learning piano, but pretty much anything. Your piano teacher, Tim, here, and let's get right on to it. All right, I like that one a bit better, although my editor can make the choice of... Uh, the first one's better in his mind. All right, um, here we go. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the importance of setting goals. So without goals, you really don't know where you're headed. You also don't really know if you're making as much progress because if you have a goal in mind and then you have like kind of your way to get there, which we'll, I'll show you how to do that, um, it really, really helps you not only have a direction, but you can track your direction, making sure that you are on the right path. Today, I'm gonna break down goal setting into macro goals and micro goals. So let's get on to macro goals and let me explain what those are all about. Okay. So your macro goals are the big picture goals of what you wanna do. So when learning how to play piano, 
Learning how to play piano is your biggest macro goal that you could possibly do. Although I do recommend um, breaking the macro goals into smaller, maybe not micro goals yet. I'll explain what micro goals are in a second. But, but instead of like, all right, just learning how to play piano, maybe break it down into like reading music, all, all the core things that you need to accomplish playing piano. Those are micro goals in comparison to the bigger goal of learning piano. But I would still say those are still overreaching big picture goals. Now, um, your big picture goals, your macro goals should take place over a long period of time, like a few months, maybe even years, because you're gonna have to set uh, micro goals to achieve that macro goal. So say that like one of my macro goals learning how to play piano is to get better with the left hand. That's your macro goal. That's gonna take weeks, months, maybe even years to accomplish. Well, then you want to start breaking that down into the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is micro goals. As I kind of alluded to before, micro goals are the smaller goals that lead you up to achieving your macro goals. So I mentioned that learning how to play piano with the left hand is a good macro level goal. Then think to yourself, what are some things that you can practice that will help you achieve that goal. So maybe things like learning your scales, which is just very simple movement between each hand. Maybe something like learning a Cherney left hand etude or some left handed pieces in there. And then what you do, want to do is you want to write those down. And then you want to, as your like weeks of practice go by, make sure that the goal of one of your weeks of practice is to meet one of those goals. So maybe learning your scales could be um, a, a week. It's probably going to take you longer than a week to learn all your scales, um, but maybe set that for one week or as many weeks as you need. And then set maybe like the Cherney Etudes or whatever other pieces will get you there for the following weeks. And then make sure you're charting that out over time, writing down your goals so that you make sure that you are on your way to achieving them. Okay, ba, 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 ba. just make sure I, I cover everything. Pretty important. Okay. So your goal all the way at the top is to learn how to play piano. Let's do another example. Maybe you want to get better at rhythm. So what are some things you can get to do to get better at rhythm? Well, obviously learn how to count is one. So you might want to spend a week learning how to count or as long as that takes then you might want to um, start practicing with the metronome. The thing I mentioned in the last lesson that kind of ticks back and forth playing with that. Maybe you want to spend a few weeks on that. Maybe you can come up with some other ideas. Maybe um, listening to some recordings of pieces that you're learning and trying the professional recordings and matching your tempo and your speed and your rhythms with that. That could be something you could work on for another short period of time. And getting better at rhythm is gonna take you, it's, that's why it's a macro level goal, I consider it, because it's gonna take you months, if not years to accomplish. I'm still working on my rhythm. Okay, then I think that's enough examples for that. We'll do one like kinda at the end here. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll do I'll do a good example here in a second. Okay. Before we continue, I want to mention that today's lesson is brought to you by the courses over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. So if you're really enjoying the lessons over here on the YouTube channel, you're going to love my courses over my website because not only do they have the same style of videos that you're used to seeing here on the channel, they also include, um, along with the instructional videos, um, notes, practice assignments, real sheet music to play, activities. It's really like a real like college course or a course you would take for school where you're not just learning about something and moving on. You're learning about it, and then you have the material to um, the exercises and things to practice those and then master the topics as well, which is super, super important in music. You don't want to just spend one day reading music and then never touch it again because what will happen? You'll forget all about it and you don't really have all the skills to um, or, or all the things to reinforce that skill. So that's the big benefit 
over YouTube. Of course, these courses are lifetime access, just meaning that they never expire, so you don't have to worry about finishing them in any sort of time. And I recommend you going to my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, to see more about what they can offer for you. I'm going to give you a small glimpse right now. Okay, scrolling down here, you can see that um, not only do they include instructional videos, but all the other things that I mentioned. Uh, these are great for beginners. So if you've just found out about me, or maybe you haven't been following me for a while, but you need a really good solid foundation on that beginner stuff, these courses will help you do just that, specifically the ones in the beginner's pack. I'll, I'll mention that in a little bit. And then um, if you do have a good amount of experience already and you're looking to advance your skills to that next level, then my courses will help you do just that. And you're not only just going to learn piano, but you're learn music theory, improvisation, rhythm, ear training, and pretty much anything else I thought you would need to be a well-rounded musician. You can contact me anytime uh, with any questions you may have, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And then you can read through the rest right there. Then the next thing I want to mention is you can purchase courses individually if you want by going to the buy courses tab at the top. But what I recommend you do is check out these course packs because you're going to get a much better deal. You're going to get a group of course courses for, for a smaller um, amount of money. So courses normally are $29.99 a piece, but as you can see with this beginner's pack, it's just $49.99 or $50 for four courses. So that's a pretty good deal. And then any of the courses you want to learn more about, see like what they cover, um, anything like that, just click on the course and you're going to get a course description, um, what you're going to need to know ahead of time, the pieces you're going to be learning and everything else. And then on the bottom, you can see where you can purchase that course, either individually, part of the beginner's pack or the all course access, which is the best deal, of course, if you want to pick up all of them. So same thing with the intermediate um, pack and the advanced pack, except the intermediate packs a bit more money. However, it includes a lot more courses. So again, any course you're interested in, click on it. It shows you what it's going to be about. You can watch a sample lesson from the course and go from there. One more thing I want to tell you before we move on is use code YouTube during checkout to get an additional 15% off. So go to pianolessonsontheweb.com, code YouTube, 15% off. Okay, back to where we were at. Okay, ba, 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 ba. let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm going to do an example of what we did today just to kind of show you what we're going to be doing. So let me get out a fresh virtual sheet of paper here and we'll go from there. Um, hmm. Wait a second. Okay. Just hold on. There we go. All right. Let me get my pen out. Hopefully it works. I haven't used it in a long time. And guess what, guys? It doesn't work. That's not good. <laughs> so I need to replace the batteries in this thing. Okay, anywho, then we're going to do it like this. I'm going to do it in a Word document. Okay, let me get this set up, and then we'll get ready to rock here. Okay, here we go. All right, let me think of a macro level goal to achieve. Um, so we did rhythm, we did like reading music, things like that. Um, okay, you know what? Um, say this. Okay, our macro goal is actually to learn a specific piece since that would take you a while to do. Um, now, let's say maybe um, learn Moonlight Sonata is your macro level goal. So what you want to do now for your micro goals is think and look at Moonlight Sonata and see what things you're going to need to know to play Moonlight Sonata. Let's take a look and I'll walk you through it. 
All right, let me get Moonlight Sonata out here. Should only take a second. There's Pathetic. All right, let's do it this way. Mm -hmm. There it is. I need to organize this stuff better. All right, uh, here we go. Okay, so here I have Moonlight Sonata up. As you can see um, right away, and now if you're not into theory so much, you might not know all this, so you might want to ask a teacher, maybe look up online on what you need to do to accomplish this. But right away, I see these three note patterns in the right hand. These are known as arpeggios, because if you play them together, they make a chord, like so, but we're playing them separately. So... Guess what? One of our macro level goals is going to be, what do you think? All right, and then let me bring it back here. It's gonna be to learn arpeggios. I'm gonna list these out as a list. Arpeggios. Now, the thing is to learn Moonlight Sonata, that's probably gonna take you, you know, I'm just gonna write months here. It's gonna take you months to do. Arpeggios is gonna take you weeks to do. So that's how you know it's a micro level goal to help you achieve that. Now let's take a look at the piece some more and chart out maybe some more micro level goals that we should work on. Okay, let me make sure, okay, everything looks pretty good. Um, <laughs> give me a second guys, here you go. Okay, I see these things being played with my left hand now these, let me actually get both up here. There you go. Now you can see what I'm talking about and the piano. So we have these things down with our left hand. These are known as octaves. So what you may want to do as a micro level goal is to practice playing octaves. An octave is also a type of interval, which is just the distance between two notes. So you may also want to make one of your macro level goals learning intervals. So let's write those down. So we have playing octaves and then intervals. And that's learning about intervals. Like, like even with inter intervals, you could do um, like learn intervals to know what they are and then practice intervals, right? So you can even make more micro level goals within the micro level goals. So they, they keep branching down um, in terms of what you need to do. So intervals and, and playing octaves. Okay, so we got those two up there. Let's chart out maybe just a couple more goals here. There could be, honestly, endless goals to achieve this piece, but we'll only talk about a few. Maybe not endless, but it could go dozens long. Uh, let's take a look here. Okay. Okay, this last measure on this line here, you have these overarching lines over many notes. Those are called slurs. And uh, slurs come together to meet, make complete phrases. So you want to, sorry about that, oops. <laughs> That's the one I want, sorry, it's been a while, guys. So you wanna learn about um, slurs and phrases. So that'll be the last goal we'll write down. Like I said, there would be more than this. Okay, and then just going through the list here, I'm gonna give you like just a general thing of how long I think you should be working on, you know, playing this stuff. Actually, you know, all these are weeks, actually, because you don't want to short yourself, even if some of these seem pretty easy. But anyway, each of these is gonna take you weeks to work on. So after this, how are we going to set up our timeline? Well, that's where I'll show you from here.
Okay, so arpeggios. The first thing you want to start out with is your goals. I would just do them in order of what you listed or try to make them in the order of difficulty if you know how difficult these are. But I would say um, maybe like one to three weeks on arpeggios. So what I would do is for each week that went by, one through three, I would write down arpeggios. I would go through an arpeggio book, learn as much about it as I can. You know, maybe two weeks on octaves. Shouldn't be too much. They're really just playing those up and down the keyboard, I, I recommend maybe doing something like this, doing um, playing your scales in octaves, because that's a really simple way just to get the distance right, because you want to maintain that distance as you're playing up the piano. Same thing, maybe do arpeggios the same way. Okay, intervals, I on each of your macro um, th goals, I might spend two weeks on each of those. Again, it's as long as you need, and then let's just say like two weeks for slurs, and then two weeks for phrases. So what am I gonna do? Here's week one. What should I practice? Arpeggios, and that could take you anywhere from week th one to three, but say now we're on week four, so we spent all the time working on arpeggios, then you're gonna work on um, octaves. I think you get the idea, that's two weeks, and then week six would be slurs, or no, intervals, sorry. And then just go from there. Okay, here we go. All right, I think that's pretty good, like with the examples and everything. Um, let me look over my notes here just to make sure that I didn't forget or leave anything out. Because the worst thing is finishing the lesson and being like, oh man, I was supposed to mention that. No. Um, here we go. All right, and then you know what? I think we're, well, you know what I'll do is I will do the outro here. Now, if you're new to the live streaming experience, and again, for my editor, although I think he gets it by now. Um, I'm going to give an outro right now. It's going to kind of seem like we're ending the live stream, but we're not. This is really just so when we piece the lesson together in a short format, we have an ending to it. And I can point you, you know, where to watch the next video. Um, okay. Make sure to check out the other lessons on the channel, specifically these ones right here, which are going to give you some helpful tips and strategies learning piano, just like the ones you saw today. So thanks for coming by, everybody. Your piano teacher, Tim, here, and I'll see you in the next lesson. There we go. It was a little awkward, but sometimes I like to make them a little awkward because, I don't know, I think it's just kind of fun. Kind of fun. Um, okay, here we go. Let me... Now, I will be taking some questions about um, goal setting. So if you had any questions about what we did, or maybe there's a goal you'd like to um, ask me about to see like maybe what the micro level goals would be, uh, now I'm gonna take those. But before, I'm going to take a drink, if I can reach it. If I fall over, you know what happened. Oh, here we go. Got him. Oh yeah, smash the like button, guys. I don't ask for, well, this is recent, but I don't know if I'm gonna ask for likes anymore. Well, because from what I've heard, well, the thing is it still reigns true that like, if you like the video and it has a lot of likes, people will see that. I think other students and know that it's a good lesson. So yeah, I guess, I guess I'll keep asking for likes. In terms of like the algorithm and thing, I was told that they don't really hold any weight anymore when they kind of did before. But I still think in terms of like a community engagement, I think they're still pretty valuable. <sighs> All right, let's go up and down here. See um, what you guys have to say. Um, Wow, we got a lot of students in here today chatting, which is great. I love it. All right, let's go through here. Hello from Southern California. Hello. I am well. Hopefully everybody else is also. 
How to play piano cover for a beginner? Well, Leon, I can answer that in another lesson. Not today, though. King Gamer says, I have been here on your channel for ages. Well, welcome, King Gamer. So happy you could join us. I don't remember you being in any of the live streams up until now. I could be wrong, though. Um, but I am glad that you're here and you've been on the channel for a long time. So everybody welcome out King Gamer, even though he is an OG. Oops. Okay. Leon. You gotta chill, bro. <laughs> or, or lady. Because if you keep spamming, I'm gonna have Jeremy block you. Um, but only if it continues. I get that you're trying to get your, like, point across and your question across. The thing is, is, like, I can't answer every, like, random question, especially right away during the lesson. So I always, I always try to save time at the end of the lesson where people can ask questions. I usually like it to be about what we're talking about. But if you do have a, a general question, like the one you have, I would um, be happy to point you in the right direction. For example, I kind of feel bad now. So <laughs> let me... Um, let me do this really quick because it only takes a second. Um, so what I recommend you do, this is like a pro tip for anybody, is so he wanted to know or she wanted to know about chord progressions. So just type in chord progressions and then lessons on, it can be all one word if you want, lessons on the web. And oh hey, how to create your own chord progression. So this one's pretty good. You might want to check out this one first, how chords are constructed 101. You know, that's pr pr really basic there but you know what I'm going to throw you this lesson right here because I think this one is probably more what you're looking for although if you're a very beginner check out that other lesson so I'm just going to type in um, chord progressions and check out that lesson there okay let's hold on everybody Tim, how often should one learn the Chernian Canon exercises? Or Hannon, probably, you mean. Um, uh, make them as part of your regular practice routine. So maybe pick like one Cherny etude or, or um, Hannon exercise and then work on that for a week. So that would be more of a micro level thing. Um, I wouldn't try to learn every Hannon exercise in a day. I think that's doable. But the thing about Hannon exercises is they're not only about getting the right notes but you want to get your hands synced up so you can play them faster and faster so you want to spend ample time on each one even if it seems um, too easy okay fireflower says just driving by to say hello it's been a while well that wel welcome fireflower so glad that you could drop in um, it has been a while probably um, it's been a while since you joined the stream but we haven't had a stream until last two days ago um, for a while so welcome back glad to have you with us i took care of that tim for you i told him to stop okay great yeah i don't think he meant anything by it because uh, sometimes you can tell they're trying to be mean or, or like um just be a jerk but but yeah yeah posting more the only thing the only time i ever want you to spam is like if something is broken on the live stream like say this video is frozen or something or like you can't hear me Oh my goodness, please spam <laughs> the chat in all capitals, everybody, if that happens. That's the only only time uh, that I want you to do that. All right, let me see here. Hi from Switzerland. Welcome, Marcel. Although you've been here quite a few times. We got Greg Wiles back, everybody. Um, awesome. Hey gang, good to be back. Welcome back, Randy. Glad to hear from you. I believe I've talked to you a little bit here or there over social media. Um, or at least I remember exchanging an email with you in the last month or so. At least I think that was you. There's so many students now, I, I can't. <laughs> My brain isn't that big. Can't keep track of 120,000. <laughs> Uh, Crazy Tornado says, my macro goal is going um, up from piano starter to playing on the organ. Well, that's great. That's great. So just kind of like chart out now what you need to do to get there. Now, you, like I said, you might need to ask a teacher to make sure you got everything or look up online. Uh, forums are really good. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Piano World. 
uh, just type in Piano World into Google. I, I forget whether it's com or I think it's .org. Uh, they have a really good forum there about people asking questions and things like that. So you can ask people there also. Uh, TJ Washington says, hi. Hello, TJ. Welcome. We got Sean Q back once again. Or Shank. <laughs> uh, we got Randy says, since I started writing a monthly goal, which is great, which would be your more macro level goal and then your weekly micro. I've been feeling more focused and satisfied. Yes. You know, I write out micro and macro goals all the time. Um, I don't want to show you my goal list because I actually like what I do. So here's my like morning routine. I get up, obviously I make coffee. Um, I go to the gym, but before I do that is I make a list and I write today's date on it. And I'm not going to show you because it has like kind of some personal things written on it that I don't know. You don't need to know about, but um, but it, but then I list out like the things that I want to accomplish that day. So like my my micro level goals. And actually, what I do every once in a while, like every month or maybe even the beginning of the week on Sunday, is I'll write down the macro, like what I want to achieve over the week, what I want to achieve over the month. And then each day I list out what I want to achieve that day. Usually it's things that I normally don't get to. So like brushing your teeth isn't on there, at least for me, unless you don't brush your teeth, you should write it down. Um, there are always things like things that I would normally neglect, like clean the kitchen or something like that. And my goal for each day is to get through, to obviously do the things I need to do for work, but then get through each of those things as well. And I do feel more accomplished doing so, for sure. Uh, do I have a video on getting the finger positions right? Yeah, I, I do. I need to make a new one, to be honest. But um, this one, I think, will do it for now. Um, I actually have kind of a funny story, but I don't know if I should tell you guys. Um, yeah, I shouldn't mention it here. It's kind of inappropriate. <laughs> it has to do with, with typing in uh, this lesson and finding it. And I messed up one time on stream. This was like when really beginning and it showed some unsavory um, <laughs> thumbnails. All right, anyway, let's type in uh, what are we going to do here? Here we go. Okay, the uh, you type in piano finger technique and then lessons on the web. Uh, the beginner's lesson on proper piano fingering. So you want to check this one out. Let me grab you that link and okay. This piano finger technique. All right, do, do, do. Jeremy's uh, being supportive as usual, which is great. We got Randy, longer term goal, thinking about, let me get this here, thinking um, seriously of doing a family Christmas performer, performance. That's great, so that's your macro level goal. And then your micro would be like um, what pieces you would learn to do that. And then maybe micro goals under those micro goals, micro micro goals, is um, to list out like like we did with Moonlight Sonata, look through those pieces, say, okay, do they have arpeggios in them? Okay, I should be practicing my arpeggios, all that kind of stuff, and build from there. Will I ever do lessons on specific pieces? The answer is yes. I do have it on my list. I don't know if we're doing it this month. I don't know. We'll look here in a minute, and I'll tell you, uh, try to tell you how close it's going to be. I do change my mind sometimes, though. So if I promise you a lesson and it doesn't come, um, that's because I kind of thought about it some more. The thing is, I can't do every type of lesson. Like, I always try to concentrate on ones that I know people, like, really want, and then I'll do ones that are, like, a little bit more for people that are, are already subscribed or been following me. The, like the ones that maybe a smaller amount of people would want, but they really want, you know. I, I like making those lessons as well, but I can't I can't make those lessons all the time, unfortunately. Uh ba 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 Tim's lessons are really well structured, says Randy, thank you so much. I know I used to know Moonlight Sonata when I was young. That was a long time ago. I've since killed those brain cells. Oh, no. Shank says, uh, my goal this week is sight reading. Great. Um, it might take you longer to learn sight reading. Actually, sight reading is the macro, macro of macro goals because sight reading is something you should never, never stop practicing. Uh, 
Uh, my goal, okay. I took a 15 year break, is on way out of practice. Yeah, that's okay, that happens to a lot of us. But don't let that get, so if you ever take a break, don't let that get you down. Like, just start again from wherever you can. It's gonna be a little frustrating at first because you're gonna think about where you were and where you are, it's gonna make you mad. But forget about that, just get started again. Also depends on the learning type, as Adrius says. I agree with that. Slow learner, um, learn hands or by ear. Yep, all those can really um, change how how well you're or how differently you're going to learn. I, I always find that students have every student has a strength and every student has a weakness or a list of strengths and a list of weaknesses. And there there could be students that excel at certain things, like just just getting on the piano and playing. Like some people excel at that, but when it comes to music theory and a lot of that stuff they they might not be as good so you know try to be as well-rounded of a musician as you can i i'm a big proponent of playing your strengths but you should also develop your weaknesses enough to where you're competent enough to get to get through give a brief summary overall i can do that for you guys Very good to see you as well, Zaynep. Happy to have you with us once again. Um, back to piano after several decades. It's great to have a 21st century technology to help me out. I agree. I agree. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, I was going to do, I'm going to do like a real quick rundown of what we talked about today as per the request. Okay, and then this, I, I don't think this will be part of the edited video unless my editor feels like it's necessary, but... Uh, okay, let me think about it. Okay, so today we talked about setting goals. Now, whenever you're setting a goal or trying to do anything, there's the big picture of what you're trying to do, right? So, like, say that um, I want to get in really good shape to do a non-piano example. You can, you can watch the video again for the piano examples. But say I want to get in shape. That's your macro-level goal. It's going to take you longer than a day to achieve. It's going to take you weeks, months probably even years to, to really get there, or, or a year of like really hard work. Okay, so to get in shape, what do you need to do? You have to, that, that's your macro level goal. Then you need to break that down into micro level goals. The, the two micro level goals that make the most sense are eating healthier or cutting your calories or, or however you may do that. I, both will do that, eating healthier and cutting calories. Um, and then two is more exercise, right? And then you break down, like, so say um, our goal of eating healthier, which was one of our micro-level goals, you can break that down into smaller goals. How are you going to achieve that? Eat less pizza, eat more vegetables, you know, have this for breakfast instead. Um, cut back on, on alcohol or whatever. I don't, I don't really drink anyway, but, you know, that, that will definitely help you out. And then your other macro, your micro goal underneath learning or, or getting in shape is exercise. How are you going to do that? You're going to run outside more, run on the treadmill, run more in general. Uh, you're going to lift weights maybe. You're going to do whatever you need to do to get there, and then you're going to list those out. And then for each of those micro-level goals, so like um, say say eating less pizza was one of the ones for eat, being healthier, well, chart out a time frame on when you want to work on that. So maybe spend the next three weeks, next month, eating less pizza if that's your vice like that's your main thing that's getting you or, or maybe alcohol spend a month just cutting back on that and that will help you so you want to assign a time period to each of these goals now can your goals overlap can you can you do more than one goal in a certain time period absolutely in fact you should because to do one goal at a time you know for a month each one it's going to take you a long long time but that's okay because honestly patience is the key to achieving a lot of great things um, because if you lose your patience and give up halfway well you've wasted all your time <laughs> whereas if you get halfway you're like man it's kind of working out but not really but you have the patience to see it all the way through well you've made the whole thing then um, worth it Okay, guys, so, uh, ba, ba, ba. so we missed a comment or question. I apologize. 
Sean says, I don't have a macro goal yet. Well, you probably do if you want to learn piano. Like, you're here, right? So you probably are interested in music or piano. So there's your first macro goal, and then you want to break it down into the things you want to work on. Any tips on practicing octaves? Um, yeah, I'm going to go over this really quick for, for people with smaller hands, which I, I have smaller hands. They're not tiny, but... Um, I can reach a ninth reliably, which isn't isn't great, but it's not bad. I'd say it's about average. Okay, so here's the thing, what I want you to do. So practice your scale. So practice like the C scale, which is just from one C up to the next C, but practice them in octaves. Go as slow as you need to go to hit that those accurately. Now, what if you have smaller hands than mine and you can only reach a seventh? Well, here's what you do. You, you push down the pedal, the foot pedal, and you hit the first C first, and then the next C, you hit them separately. And then you see how fast you can do that. Because, um, let me do it with a better example. I can't hit a tenth, so you might do it for octave, but I'm gonna do it for a tenth. See, I did it so fast that you can tell they're different, they're separate, but you can still hear that harmony like those notes together because the pedals helping you blend those together and then doing them real fast will get you there so anytime and actually no matter how big your hands are you're probably gonna have to use this technique at some point but yeah like I said you hold down the pedal you play the first note first then the top note then the second note rather and you do them as fast as you can and that's what I recommend you do and just practice your scales that way Any tips? Okay, I got that. I have a problem reading chords when I play. Um, good thing for UX is that we have um, a lesson coming out very soon on identifying chords by sight. So I think that's the one you're gonna um, you're gonna want to see. And then if if you come to that one, or if you watch the recording and you still don't get it, or you have another question, then let me know then. Should I try to perform this piece or go to something simpler? Well, it depends on what piece you're talking about. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, I don't know. I must have missed it. But yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're learning a piece and you've been practicing it for months and it's like not really getting any better, yeah, you know, shelf that piece for a while. You can even keep practicing it if you want. But yeah, learn some smaller, um, easier pieces and work your way up for sure. What are some goals that most people have while learning piano? So um, that's pretty simple um, answer actually, because there's a set number of skills. Actually, next time, I think the next one, all right, I'm gonna go over the the, the calendar soon, what we're gonna be doing. But basically, the, your, your goals underneath learning piano, your, your first set of micro goals, should be the skills you need to learn piano. So in my opinion, how to read music. Um, sight reading, you know, reading music from sight that you've never seen before. Um, developing finger dexterity, which you do through scales. So, so, you know, maybe like reading music, sight reading, scales. You need to know about rhythm, right? So you list out those, and then you list out underneath those what you want to um, be working on to achieve those goals. All right, Chunk says, squirrel, yes, but you can still play however risk gets tired. Okay, I missed that one, so I apologize if I uh, skipped it. Uh, let's see here. Good session, Tim. Jeremy, thank you very much, Randy. I appreciate that. Rich says, hi, Tim. What's the best way to record audio from keyboard? When I record my iPhone, there's a lot of ambient noise. <laughs> yep, uh, that will happen for sure. So Rich, um, your keyboard, what kind of keyboard do you have, Rich? I know you have a Yamaha something or other. You have to look at the, the outputs on the back of your keyboard because in some cases you might be kind of screwed if you don't have the right outputs on the back of your, of your keyboard. There's no way for really for me to show you here without this manning everything. But anyway, 
Um, let me do this. Well, maybe you're telling me what um, keyboard you might have. So let me look this up on like Amazon, see if I can get a like a, a visual for you without dismantling everything here. All right, um, piano keyboard. Okay, now those ones are no good for what we need. Yeah, you know, I'm going to look at the Yamaha ones because that's probably what you're going to say anyway, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Let me find it. You know, I'm going to type in 88 because I know you have an 88 key. You might have even answered me by now. Let's see. Yamaha YPG 535. Oh, you have that one. Okay. I've actually played on this one. It's probably this one here. This is a good instrument. Like, it's a good, very mid-level kind of instrument. Man, there's no... Let's see. There's no picture here. I, I mean, of, like, the back of it. Anyway, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, okay. Number of keys. Ba -ba -ba -ba, USB. <sighs> Six track recorder and sequencer. Okay, that's like built in there. USB storage. Um, it really depends on what you have on the back of your device. Um, do you have, Rich, on the back of this thing, do you have like an audio out at all, like like to plug in speakers? I guess that's all you really need to know because if you can do that, you can um, figure out a way to get it into your computer. So what I use is something called an audio interface. Um, while Rich is uh, answering this, okay, use something called an audio interface, and you want to make sure, obviously, it has the correct type of inputs that you need. But basically, Behringer makes decent ones. Okay, those are outputs. Where are the inputs at? They're usually on the front. Okay, so here's your audio interface. This one's actually really cheap. I don't know. Like I said, you want to do some research into the correct one. Send me um, a link if you want, and I can take a look at, you know, if it's the right one for you. But this one should cover everything because it can take mics. It can take, um, like, a regular guitar cable. And then it looks like you can take smaller ones. Anyway, you plug in. So basically, you, you take a um, the right cable, the right kind of cable you need. So you have to match these sizes. You plug it into the back of your keyboard. If it has an audio out, if it doesn't, oh, you know what? You can probably do it through the um, through the headphones. Yeah, you can probably find a headphone because ed headphones an audio out, and and almost every keyboard has headphones. So you probably get a cable to go from that into one of these deals. And then what these do is that these will plug in your computer via USB. This is one thing that I'm running right now. Um, I have a fancy, fancier one than this one. but um, And then you can record. It'll set up as like an audio capture device on your computer. And then you can record with, um, I suggest you use a program called Audacity. Uh, hold on a second. So it looks like it's audacityteam.org. Okay, yeah, and then you download it from there. So that's totally it's a totally free program. You go into the um, like the settings here, and you set up your device, and then it should record what you're playing, um, and go from there. And that's probably the cleanest way to get it get it done. I know it's kind of a, it might seem a little confusing, but it's actually not that bad. Although I remember when I was setting up all this stuff, it was kind of confusing. So yeah, so if you have an audio output, even if it's headphones, you can, you can figure it out. My keyboard has a headphone jacks, but my headphones, uh, they didn't come with the keyboard, don't work with it? Weird. Try a different pair of headphones. Or see if there's a headphone mode on your keyboard. Yeah, you might need an adapter. 
I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to look at it personally. That's the thing with these is like I can tell you what works for mine, but my chances are you don't have my keyboard. So when you run out the headphone jack, it may disable the onboard speaker, so you would have to listen through the output. Yes. So that's the thing is, but that's the thing about it as well is like so. Say you plug in um, through your headphone jack into this audio interface that I was talking about. Well, on the audio interface, there's also another headphone jack. So you can plug it into the audio interface, and then you could plug your headphones into that, and you can still hear just like you would. But it probably would, it almost definitely would, um, disable your speakers from there. So you'd have to play um, if you were recording with your headphones on. Great choice of topic to begin uh, the new series. Well, thank you very much, Judine. Can you connect keyboard straight to computer? Uh, you need the audio interface. There's well, here's the thing: is you probably have a USB port on. If I remember right, your keyboard has an audio or a USB port to plug in to your computer, but that's for MIDI, and for MIDI, you need to set up. A bunch like you wouldn't be able to record the sound as it sounds coming from your keyboard. A MIDI is like um, how do I explain this without getting crazy? With the MIDI, basically, what plugging it into your computer would do from right from the keyboard is you would be able to get another program and map out another instrument to the MIDI. But then you need like a more expensive program to pull that off. So. Yeah, I would do it the way I said with the audio interface. Because you wouldn't be really getting a recording of like your dynamics and all that. And, and all the different things. Like with the MIDI. So you'd be missing out on a lot of the recording stuff. Um, also, I'm trying to think of another way you could do it with a microphone. Um, there are microphones that will plug into your iPhone. This might actually be an easier solution. There are microphones like um, research the different types of microphones that help get rid of like external noise, like a shotgun microphone. I think is good, or, or direction. You want a directional microphone, I think, rather than something that picks up all the noise, which is the microphone inside of your iPhone. So you can look online. Um, let me let's do like a quick search right now. And then I'll move on because we're running out of time a little bit. Um, but let me do this. Now, I can't tell you whether this is going to work 100% or not because I haven't really done this before. Okay. But there, here you go. Like, like here's one. Best uh, lavalier mic for noise cancellation. So you might want to look through like the reviews of that, like does, is the noise canceling any good? Does it suck? Um, anything like that. Um, you don't really want an omnidirectional because I think that picks up from every little place. You want like a, a, a di I think you want a directional mic. I'm going to be honest. I am not a microphone expert. I did look up like what kind of ones I need to do this, but it's been a long time. So look through these. Yeah, you can try this out. It might be a little bit more cost effective. But like I said, I can't tell you whether this is like the way to go or not or like what kind of results this is going to get you. Yeah, so I don't know. Like there's one here that has like a regular stand to it. I would imagine no matter what though, like I said, I can't make any promises. I would imagine no matter what that these types of microphones are probably better than the ones that's built into your iPhone. I would think. Like I said, I can't make any promises. All right. Thanks for everybody's help. All right, good. It looks like everybody else. Is, okay, controller. The so somebody has actually way better described the MIDI than I did. Remy says use a USB. Using a USB lets you use the keyboard as a controller. The interface lets you record the actual instrument. Yep. So like the actual sound that's coming out of your 
keyboard. MIDI, this stuff is so confusing. Oh, it gets worse. Yeah, it's basically like, like think about, um, I would think about MIDI like this. You plug in your keyboard, not your, your piano keyboard, but your typing keyboard into your PC or your Mac if you're, if you're weird like that. I'm just kidding. Anyway, you plug it in your computer, whatever it may be, right? And then you can type on it. That is a type of controller, right? It has, it connects to your computer. The computer has drivers that recognize what it is. So when you press K on the keyboard, it types K on your screen. Well, what plugging in your keyboard, your piano keyboard uh, via USB would do is basically treat it kind of like that, where, where each key would have like a command you could set to it. So if you wanted to, it to play a bird sound or something, you could do that. But yeah, you're not going to get the original sound that way. Okay, Rich, so you, the keyword is right underneath the ventilation. So what I would do is, is do get the audio interface. Uh, we can talk more about, you know, maybe the one to get or if you have any questions about that. And we can go from there. But that's the audio interface will give you a very clean kind of sound because you're not getting any microphone sound. It's actually literally taking the signal input from your, your keyboard and putting it into the computer. Are there any jazz pieces for beginners that I'd recommend? Well, that would be not off the top of my head, to be honest. Fireflower says you're welcome. Thank you very much. Looks like you answered something Laredo asked. I have a baby grand piano, nothing to plug in. Yeah, so you're gonna have to um, record it the old fashioned way with a microphone. The, the little microphones that I showed you on Amazon might actually kind of help because what you can do is you can clip it like underneath the uh, the board that if you have a baby grand piano, you have that board that lifts up. For, it's not the soundboard. Soundboard's inside. But anyway, it's that board you lift up. You put the little peg on. You can actually um, clip it somewhere on that or you can clip it. I, I forget where I used to clip it. But there's a lot of places to clip it on a, a grand piano. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to cash out for today. We were getting close to time. Oh, let me, excuse me, I had to burp. There it is. Um, I want to do this before we go. Okay, so there's a community tab on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. Great place to get courses, by the way. Um, so today we're talking about, you know, hitting your piano goals. Friday is five things you should practice every day. So whether you're a beginner or not, you want to check that one out. I'm going to try to give some new information I haven't given on the channel before. And then Sunday, uh, next Sunday, is a lesson I have done before, but I think I can make one way better now. Um, it's five sight reading tips. It might even be more than five, but I like to keep the list of five. It makes the lesson length uh, like the perfect amount. Oh, look, tips and exercises for mastering your chords would be a next, no, two Sundays from now. Wait a second, what's weird? Um, Friday, Sunday... Friday. Okay, okay. I got it mixed up. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, and then the piano practice routine. So check out the um, the community tab for you know what we're going to be talking about and when. Oh, and then at the end of the month, we're doing how to identify chords by sight, which I told somebody about earlier. So remember, go to pianolessonsontheweb.com. Oops, check out this page here. And uh, sign up for some courses is a great way to invest in your own music education, take things to that next level, as well as invest in the channel as well. Because without the support of you, the viewer, and uh, the students who sign up through the website, this all would not be possible at all. So, you know, thank you so much for all that. And uh, like I said, it's a great way to invest in your own music education and back into the channel as well. And remember to use code YouTube during checkout for 15% off. Okay, everybody. All right, everybody, you are very welcome. Thanks for coming by today once again. Great, More, more great lessons on the way. And yeah, I'll, your piano teacher, Tim, here. Thanks for coming by. And I'll see you, yes, you, in the next lesson. All right, take care, everybody.